Thanks. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, you too. All right, 644 now. Google's latest version of a self-driving car is hitting the streets of Mountain View. Only on 5 Kit Doe shows us the prototype in action. I have seen the future of self-driving cars, and it's adorable. Google's next generation of autonomous vehicles officially began testing on public roads in Mountain View last week. The pod car is sleek, with just a black sensor on top. Compare that to the old fleet of Lexus SUVs with sensors everywhere. The new pod car has no trunk, and the steering wheel, gas, and brake pedal are all removable. The pod car is very cautious. Top speed is limited to 25 miles an hour. We saw them come to full stops right on the line. For some reason, this one was driving in the middle of the lane as it cruised through a neighborhood. Google also released more about what the car sees with its spinning radar. It tracks and calculates the path of every moving object, making evasive maneuvers when necessary. It can even recognize the hand signals of a police officer. And over the past six years, Google has amassed a vast database of shapes of pedestrians to help the computer make sense of the world around it. For years, Google stayed tight-lipped about crashes. This photo from 2011 was one of the few fender benders ever captured on camera. But thanks to a new state law, companies must now use this form to report all accidents to the DMV. Google took it one step further and now publishes monthly crash reports online. In six years and more than a million miles in autonomous mode, Google has been involved in 15 accidents, none of them the fault of the computer. In each instance, the human passenger was there to exchange insurance information. Whomever is in command or control of the vehicle, that's who we consider the driver. So at this point in time, there is still technically a driver in those vehicles, and so that's who we would list potentially in a collision. BMW, pick me up. But what if it crashes and there's no human inside at all? BMW showed us a car that can park itself and comes to you when you call it. Who's to blame on a wreck with an empty car? The operator? The manufacturer? It seems like there really is no good answer right now. There is no, no one really has a precise answer. This is, as we go along, we're starting to figure out what needs to take place. The DMV tells us they're working on it. It's obvious the technology is way ahead of the law. Here's how Chris Ermson, head of Google's self-driving car program, ended his TED talk earlier this year. How soon can we bring it out? Well, it's hard to say because it's a really complicated problem. But these are my two boys. My oldest son is 11. And that means in four and a half years, he's going to be able to get his driver's license. My team and I are committed to making sure that doesn't happen. <laughs> Thank you. All righty, we're back out here live at Google X. This is the company's secret research division located at the old Mayfield Mall, and this is where a lot of those uh, pod cars launch from every day. They've got only two of the pod cars on the road now, but they've got a total of 25 registered, so look for a lot more of them to roll out over the next few weeks and months. Back to you. All right, yeah, Kate, adorable is the perfect adjective for that one, but what does the law say about letting a car drive itself on a public road? Yes, so uh, right now it is illegal for any company to let these cars on a public road all by themselves. The DMV says they're still trying to work out those regulations. They do not have a time frame on that because there are a lot of legal issues to work out, as you can imagine. We're live in Mountain View, Kitto, KPIX5.